everybody. It's so nice to see you. There we go. Fix the lighting. Uh, thanks for uh, waiting for me. I'm very sorry that I'm a little bit late here, uh, but I promised you a nice juicy stream. I was filming my Mandalorian breakdown. Uh, this morning I was, uh, I was a little delayed because um, uh, I was looked online and I saw it wasn't trending and I was like, oh, I'm tired. So, you know, but I'm going to have it up by the end of the day, but I wanted to not have that hanging over my head so I could talk to you for as long as we needed to. So we could have a great stream. Uh, now, when we start up, before we start with our stories, which are juicy, particularly the first two, I love the first two stories. The third one is very sad, but I included it largely because uh, I needed a third story. Hey, Nicole, I'm glad you're a new member. I'm glad you can make it. You look very nice in your photo there. You look very, very fancy. But I will say that something that's become to my attention is that I don't like the zealots that are in the DC fandom, which of course are none of you. Hey, Jerome, you guys are all awesome. Uh, but I think there are some zealots that just blindly believe and, and have conspiracy theories, both in favor, it's weird, like it was a problem with the Snyder cut, right? Uh, and now I think like James Gunn has his own brand of those kind of like, uh, you know, like till the end, ride or die fans. And I, I just feel like it makes discourse in the, situ in the area very difficult. Uh, I think that eventually everybody comes to see that for what it is. Uh, but it sure is frustrating, I'll tell you that. But I'm not going to, you know, let that affect my coverage. But it's, it's, I think that's one of the problems, I think, affecting DC. Oh, thank you, Vincent. That's very generous of you. Uh, and that's very kind. Also, I saw uh, Jerome. Every stream, Jerome gifts one membership. And that is so kind and very nice. Uh, so, yeah. All right, we got some great stuff to discuss today. Great stuff. And you don't see that in Marvel. I mean, you will see in Marvel, you have some fans that will insist they never make any mistakes over there. But I don't know, the conspiracy stuff. I mean, and that's why I was so upset with yesterday's development with Dwayne Johnson. So let's go into that. Because I was like, man, I thought we were moving away from this crap. But instead, it seems like it's, oh, look, I covered up James Gunn's face. Can I move this at all? Wasn't the live? Yes, I can. All right, there we go. We don't want to be rude. Okay. All right. So there's story number one. Boop. Boopity boop, boop, boop. Uh, future movie actor says, would have made a difference if Dwayne Johnson had agreed to be introduced in a Shazam sequel before the solo Black Adam. Okay, okay let's say this off to the beginning, okay? Also, try to make sure, just like that was, keep your comments on the subject matter, or I might not be able to address them, but don't worry. At the end of the stream, you can ask me anything that you would like. Uh, all right, so first off, let's be fair. Let's just address the elephant in the room. Zachary Levi is not a big enough star for Dwayne Johnson to stand next to him. That's just it. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want to be next to him. He didn't want to be next to him. That's just it. I mean, it's pretty clear. Uh, he, he just felt it was beneath him, okay? Uh, and uh, that's the thing. So, uh, and I think that, <laughs> thanks, Jerome. Uh, and I think that, you know, was that a problem to some degree? It was a problem for Zachary Levi, but I don't think it was a problem for the movie. I don't think it was a problem for either movie because as some people pointed out yesterday on, on social media, I don't think that anybody knows those two characters are supposed to be combined, really. You know, and I think they don't really care. I mean, I had one friend point out to me when the Black Adam came out that it was weird that somebody, that, you know, Billy Batson wasn't like, wait a minute, is somebody else saying Shazam? I should go talk to him. But, I mean, I don't think anybody saw Black... Here's the thing, of all the complaints about Black Adam, nobody was like, where's Shazam? And of all the complaints about Shazam 2, I don't think anybody was like, where's Black Adam? Right? All right, so I have my notes on this, and I want to go through them in order, but uh, I'm not condoning what Dwayne Johnson did in, when he was in D.C., but I don't think he has anything to do with the failure of Shazam 2. And that's what annoyed me. Also what annoyed me is that Dwayne Johnson has already been so humiliated and I think that he still ended up at the end of the day being the bigger man and, say, and taking his lumps and walking away that I felt bad that he was dragged back into it. I was like, he already, we already got to him and he already was wo awoken from his, from his frenzy. And, and so that, that's, it's just crazy. You know, passive aggressive, I didn't see him listed as a producer on the second one, interestingly enough. Hey, Holly Jervis. Hey, Matthew. 
Max Beck says, I don't get the point of downright hate or adding fuel to the fire. Why can't we just want everyone to be successful in their own right? That was also a little bit weird. Like, why does anyone need to be blamed for the failure of Shazam 2? I don't think anyone is expecting any of these remaining movies to do well. I don't think anybody's like, what happened? I mean, I think we're having an interesting discourse of what exactly happened, but I think we all know. Hey, thanks, Matthew. That's very kind of you. I think we all know. I'm going to put a poll. I'm going to put a poll, okay? And say, do you expect any of the remaining DCEU, oh, pre, we'll say pre-gun movies? And then you'll be like, yes, The Flash. Yes, any of them can. And then, no, all flops. And then, uh, I think that's enough options. Okay. It's hard to write polls, because, you know, you don't want to have too many... Oh, that's why I look at Minaj. First poll, Minaj, I love it. So, yeah, so, I mean, like, I don't think anybody was sitting there being like, oh, my God, I never saw this coming. Uh... Mr. Love says, I agree the reboot is, reboot is going poorly. Let's just get on with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's, so let's see what happens. All right, so anyway, let's go. So let me go through my notes. Let me go through my notes. So yeah, I got pretty upset. I got pretty upset yesterday, when, and, I, and I tweeted about it quite a bit, uh, because Warner Brothers and, and Zachary Levi, Zachary Levi, I was even coming back around on him because I thought he did such a good job in Shazam 2, but now I'm like, what a jerk. Trying to make The Rock a scapegoat for Shazam 2's awful box office numbers. So these are the two things that bothered me about it in particular. Number one, The Rock has already choked down his humble pie. He really did. We gave him no water with that. He choked it down dry. And in the end, though, he left graciously. So I don't like seeing him drag back in. I'm like, you know, he's already dead, man. Leave him alone. Uh, it rem and also, this reminded me of what was done, quite frankly, to Zack Snyder on Justice League. Some of the worst, most underhanded behavior I've ever seen in Hollywood behind the scenes. You've never even still heard the whole story. You've never even heard it. It's worse than you've ever heard. It's so bad, but you know, it's not my story to tell. But it's, I heard it, and that's one of the reasons that I defended the Snyder Cut so aggressively, because I can't stand injustice. It's actually a genetic trait that I inherited from uh, one of my parents, and you wouldn't think that would be a gene, right? But it is. I just can't stand to see injustice. And I was really upset about that. Uh, and so I had thought that had been ripped out of Warner Brothers because they even got rid of the head of PR, who had supposedly been planting these articles. So the fact that they're still getting planted, you're like, oh my God, it's never going to end. I guess, you know, and remember back in the day when so, so many of you, like uh, last Christmas or something, I got, I was like, the Snyderverse is never coming back, man. Stop it, you know? Because I feel like this is never going to end. And that's when I get really frustrated. That's one of the reasons I didn't like the Flash trailer, because I was like, if this does well, the Snyderverse is never going to end. That's why I'm upset about the soft reboot. I'm like, this drama is never going to end. We're never going to get out of this. We're going to be having this argument forever. And that's, like, really a bummer, you know? Like, nothing would make me happier for them to do a hard reboot and for James Gunn Superman to be a great movie. That would make me so happy. I'd be like, yes. Let's just move on. And I think like that's never gonna happen. So, but yeah, so what happened yesterday is we ended up, we started off the day in the exact same situation where they had a planted story in the rap. Once again, it was in the rap. They've been planning stories in the past in the rap and then also in the Hollywood Reporter. All right, that's typically where they've been. Although I saw some crazy stuff, it's weird. I don't, you know, let's not get into it too much. You know, we don't wanna throw too much shade around, but it's pretty bad. So Hollywood insiders, right, said that Dwayne Johnson made it all about him. I've been telling you he did that since the movie, before the movie came out. We all knew Dwayne Johnson was doing that. That's not new information. And then he refused. How dare he? He refused to let Shazam 2 use the JSA for a post credit scene. And that's why James Gunn's wife was in the scene. Peter Safran had to save the day, and that's who he got. And then part of me was like, was this all just to, to try and stop the narrative of James Gunn being the one to put his wife in stuff? Are they trying to go around in a very long way, which I don't think anyone took from the story, and that James Gunn's wife was, like, they didn't even want to put her in there, but because Dwayne Johnson was so mean, 
that they had no choice. And Peter Safran is the one who I, whose idea it was. And you're like, what? Like, that, it's just, it's just ridiculous. The only thing that's going to, as I said before, the only thing that's going to stop the narrative of James Gunn's wife, you know, being at like whatever the wife version of nepotism is, the only thing that's going to stop that from happening is if she starts becoming a working actress beyond DC and her husband's projects. For instance, Sean, I've been watching my Mrs. Maisel screeners. In fact, I finished them, an amazing season. I just didn't get the last episode. They're holding that from press. But I saw the first eight of nine episodes. And you know who showed up in episode six? Sean Gunn, who of course was on Gilmore Girls. Who, and Amy Sherman Palladino now went on to do uh, Mrs. Maisel. So I was like, oh wow, that's an impressive role. He had a very big role in the, in the episode. He was through, in it throughout. And I was like, wow, that makes him seem like more of a legit actor. And so that's the only thing that's going to stop this narrative, not that Dwayne Johnson was mean. But I just thought it was really uncool and very disappointing. Oh, I have a visual graphic. I messed it up. Hold on. Let me get it. Hold on. I have an image. I want to put it in here. Where'd it go? There it is. All right, so later in the day, look at that. Later in the day, Zachary Levi went on his Instagram and he posted quotes from the story and the rap and he wrote at the bottom, the truth shall set you free. Because Dwayne Johnson hadn't responded to this story all day. Here's what I'll tell you they were trying to do. I think also they were trying to change the narrative. I think that they were trying to change the narrative to not talk about how badly Shazam did, but to instead talk about how Dwayne Johnson ruined the DCEU. That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, that doesn't, that's not true. Okay, let's, uh, let's end the poll before it gets away from us. 47% of you think The Flash is going to do well. That's fascinating. And 41% think all flops. I think there is a chance The Flash could do well. If any one of them is going to do well, I think it's going to be The Flash. Uh, so anyway, Zachary Levi puts this on his Instagram story, which sets off a whole bunch of new headlines. Then the finally, finally, the Hollywood Reporter picked it up and said, Zachary Levi calls out Dwayne Johnson. And apparently also because Zachary Levi wanted a cameo on Black Adam and Dwayne Johnson apparently said no. And I guess, like, what did they think that was going to do? I mean, the movie was a horrible flop, Black Adam. I don't think anybody would be like, oh, that's the guy from Black Adam. Let's go see his movie. Uh, so I thought that was incredibly unprofessional, and I think they were, what's also bad about it is this is dangerous. This kind of a narrative does real damage to The Rock's persona. I'm so glad that he didn't respond yesterday. Uh, I saw a lot of fans agreeing online, and I was like, are these trolls or bots, you know? Like, where's this narrative coming from? Where did this, like, gun army suddenly emerge from? I saw so many people online saying, oh, it's time for The Rock to be taken down a peg, or... Uh, yeah, it's all The Rock's fault, you know? And you're like, he brought back Henry Cavill for you guys after you booed him. You booed him at Comic-Con and he brought back Henry Cavill and did the best that he could. And now you guys are like, oh yeah, boo him. I was like, that's incredible. I was just shocked to see that narrative taking place. And as I've said before, and I tweeted this too, who would join DC at this point? I've never seen someone not deeply regret it. You saw David uh, Sandberg, the director of Shazam, saying over the, uh, over the weekend, uh, I'm never doing superheroes again, right? Max is confused as to how this was allowed to persist. Gunn is always on social media and Levi may continue in his universe, so why would he allow this hostility? I don't know. Part of me feels like the fact that he didn't like shut it down, James Gunn, is was it to try and take it away and say he didn't put his wife in there, but his wife was only in there as a Band-Aid because Dwayne Johnson was mean? But then why wasn't that more em emphasized in the article? I think the article, it's not even a good hit piece. The article should have specifically said, oh, how horrible that James Gunn is getting blamed for putting his wife in these projects when in fact he had no choice. And you're like, really? There was no one else you could put in there? And once again, why isn't Viola Davis as Amanda Waller in there? Every time someone from the Suicide Squad, from the uh, Task Force X shows up in, be it Black Adam or, I mean, Dwayne Johnson, by the way, let James Gunn's wife be in his movie. She wasn't too small a star. He played along. Every time that Amelia Harcourt shows up, I'm like, why isn't it Amanda Waller doing it? Like, you know who I want to see? Viola Davis. 
That's who I want to see. So, yeah, Frosty Salt. If Amanda Waller had shown up, I mean, Peter Safin's producing this stuff. You're right. That's it. That's the answer. You know, it's like, so it doesn't really solve the thing. Like, if they were like, oh, we can't use the JSA. And by the way, who was hoping the JSA would show up at the end of Shazam 2? I don't ever want to see them again. They were awful. So if Amanda Waller had walked up at the end of Shazam 2, everyone would be like, that's an amazing end credit sequence. But again, it's not. So, Marco, I'm so glad that you enjoy Amelia Harcourt as a character. That's great. That's wonderful. You know, uh, I think it's, it's, it, we're all in a very difficult position here. Uh, so let's see. I'll ask, you know, that's okay. Popcorn roulette. Let's ask everybody whose side they're on. Okay? All right, hold on. Whose side are you on? We'll do The Rock. Then we'll do Gun, Saffron, Levi. And Levi's like so like, those are my buddies. Those are my buddies. And then we'll do I, I, I Just Want the Drama to Stop. And then we'll do a final one. It says, I Just Love the Drama. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, so, all right, so uh, let's take a look at this, okay? So I wanna recap exactly what happened, all right? Let's be honest, Shazam 2 is a heck of a lot better of a movie than Black Adam, much better film. Shazam 2 is a good movie in my opinion. Um, I know I missed some super chats, but I'm gonna have to go back to them if I, if I need to. I'm tr I gotta make sure I stay on the story or it's too hard to watch after the fact. Uh, I will open up to questions before I go to the next story though. I won't make you wait until the very end of the stream. Uh, so then, uh, Black Adam though did open bigger. Black Adam opened with 67 million, but yet only got to 392 worldwide. It didn't even make 400 million worldwide. They're both failures. They are both huge failures. Now let's look at The Rock. Oh, happy birthday tomorrow, Brendan. I'm trying to go live tomorrow, though. I'm going to try and go live earlier rather than later. So anyway, The Rock, what was his DC journey? Well, and, oh, by the way, it's all Jeff Johns' fault still. Jeff Johns is the one who sold The Rock on the idea that Black Adam could be his own standalone character. He should have said to him, you can't have Black... Black Adam is the villain for Shazam, period. So anyway, The Rock got booed at Comic-Con, which was one of the worst things I've ever seen. It was so bad. It was so bad. Then he embarrassed himself with the Henry Cavill situation, insisting that Henry Cavill was back when he wasn't, and that was just a disaster. Henry Cavill also got burned big time by all this. Then he embarrassed himself by releasing the fake financial breakdown in Deadline, right? Talk about planting articles. That was one, too, to be fair. Right? Because some of you were like, oh, Dwayne Johnson didn't handle himself gracefully. That's true. At first, he didn't. Uh, and then he got stabbed in the back by Zazie when he hired Gunn, like right after Black Adam's opening weekend. And D D Dwayne Johnson didn't even know. He found out with the rest of us. Dwayne Johnson was like, what? What was just tweeted? And they were like, James Gunn runs DC. And he was like, are you kidding me? Like, the, I think it was done like the Monday or Tuesday after Black Adam opened. And they were like, yeah, we're going with, we're going with Gunn. So I even made a joke about he was, you know, he did an Instagram post or Twitter post video from his car. And I said, it's like he's driving a fake car, but he thinks he's actually controlling the car. So I was going hard on him, right? But then, thank goodness, he woke up and he realized. Some of you even said you thought he watched that stream that I did. And I was like, oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe, okay? Uh, and he woke up and he said a gracious goodbye. He was like, I enjoyed my time. And he responded to me. Yes, he did. And he said... You win some, you lose some, which is, many of you pointed out was something I said in the stream, so I thought that was very interesting. But you know what? He walked away. He walked away with his, held head, his head held high. So good for him, you know? I mean, if, if, you, the whole point is, you know, your redemption arc. You want people to, to do well. Ryan, the reason The Rock was booed was because he said whoever might be playing Superman. And Henry Cavill fans got very upset and booed him. And that gave him the drive that he needed to get Henry Cavill for that tiny few seconds. So yeah, and then at the Oscars, the man's trying to move on with his life. And what does he get asked about backstage at the Oscars by, I believe, Variety? How do you feel about what a big bomb Black Adam was? And he had to stand there and again, choke down more of that humble pie. Variety didn't give him any water either. They were like, second serving, buddy. And I'm sure Dwayne Johnson's like, how often am I going to have to choke down this humble pie? So the fact they served him up a big piece, they're not even, it was worse. It wasn't even humble pie. They tried to make say he was the one who made the humble pie. It was horrible. 
I was horrible. And let's be honest, the Justice League versus Suicide Squad versus Black Adam movie that he had was a pretty good idea. It was, it's the movie he should have made all along, quite frankly. That's the movie he should have made all along. This Black Adam movie was awful. And it didn't pan out, though. And again, I think it all boils back to Jeff Johns, who set things up for failure. But Dwayne Johnson had absolutely nothing to do with Shazam 2 not working out at the box office. You know why that didn't work out? I think Zachary Levi caused problems for himself, and then he just went on and was more of a, a little biatch with this, okay? Uh, he's kissing, he's, he's so consumed with kissing the butt of Peter Safran and James Gunn that he's totally sold out any of his personal dignity. I'm pretty upset. Uh, okay? Uh, and then it was the thing that, uh, you know, they, they're doing a soft reboot. They're doing a soft reboot, and then they don't even commit to whether or not there's going to be more Shazam. They're like, they're like, is Shazam going to continue? And they're like, maybe. They're like, if his movie does well, and you're like, well, the movie did horribly. And they're like, but we did have an end credit sequence where we seemed to say he was sticking around. And would, would Zachary Levi be fighting so hard for Gunn and Saffron? He's going to look like the biggest dork or the biggest simp if he does not continue. Like, he, I'd be like, he's like, this is like Henry Cavill Part 2 all over again. Like, Zachary Levi's, like, running around doing a seppuki out front here, uh, and you're like, dude, do you have a contract? You know? Like, dude, hold up. You might still be fired. It, that's right, T.J. Williams, a whole clown. A whole clown. Talk of, not, not a slice of humble pie, but a whole freaking clown. The whole thing. The whole thing. It was bad. Zachary Levi, oh, his, BM says he's lost a lot of fans. I was like, he has a lot of fans. Where are they? I think he has lost a lot of fans. I'm pretty upset with him. And again, I even thought he was good in, uh, in, in Shazam 2. Oh, yeah, I did. We see. Oh, thank you for bringing it up, we see. I don't know if you saw, let's talk about lack of personal dignity. I don't know if you saw Zachary Levi's tweet where he also said yesterday that he loves The Last of Us and he'd really like to be in it. And he then added Neil Druckmann and was like, how about putting me in The Last of Us? And you're like, don't you have an agent, Zachary Levi? And I'm like, who are you going to freaking play, man? Maybe he's like, I could be Abby. You're like, I was just like, oh, my God. He deleted the tweet? He deleted it? Oh, I'm so, oh that's hilarious. But it lives on screenshots forever. It was hilarious. It was so bad. I was like, a lot of these people, their phones should be taken away from them. I'm like, you can't handle Twitter, man. You can't handle it. I just want Warner Brothers to move ahead in DC without drama. They just need to focus on the content. I think that maybe dealing with the Snyder Cut has just pulled them into this space, and they're not good at it. They should hire someone who should be like their troll in chief. And they'll be like, you fight the trolls. And the person will be like, yes, because I'm an expert in troll fighting. We got all these troll amateur fighters in here. All right, let's see what the poll says, and then I'll go back and we'll open it up to questions. Hey, Morgendorf. 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 You sounds like the Swedish chef. Morgendorf. Derp, derp, Hey, Matthew. Thank you. That's very generous of you. All right, 42% of you, almost half, just want the drama to stop. I agree. It's just I mean, like we're all getting burned, man. We're all getting burned. Wouldn't it be great just to be able to tell scoops? and talk about DC without someone coming in and being like, no, oh, no, and then, and then Ben Affleck comes out and goes full of shit, and then we, are just, we keep going around in the circle, you know? Uh, I mean, as bad as things might be over at Marvel, it's not that bad. 25% uh, of you love the drama, though. 20% of you agree with The Rock, and half of that go with Gunn, Saffron, and Levi. So, yeah, but it, it really is just all about the drama. So let's see here. Frosty the Mexican Snowman. That's just great. It says, every actor's contract should include no use of Twitter. It really should. I ready. Thank you for, I ready also. So generous consistently. KT and Biscuit says, the internet doesn't die and Levi probably won't recover due to his need to tweet and Instagram whatever he wants without an agent present. Yeah, how about pictures with him and uh, Peter Safran on the slopes? I mean, who, it's so ridiculous. Travis says, hate the drama. I love both guys, but The Rock should have allowed the JSA to appear. They were great in his film and deserve more time. Well, to each their own. I thought they were pretty awful. Um, but uh, I, don't, I honestly don't think it would have helped the movie at all. 
Like, to be honest with you, I don't think a single person, I don't think anybody would have, I think people would have just been confused. They would have been like, are these characters sticking around or not? Uh, Steven says, at least The Rock has successful films. I don't think Zachary has a single successful movie. Zachary lost the last three fans that he had. You know, I do feel though, and that's why I feel also kind of bad about this. I think this is going to hurt The Rock. I think he's going to get, he got dinged a little bit. I think it's going to take him some time to recover. And I feel bad for him about that. I feel bad. Popcorn Roulette said, could Zachary Levi be Lobo'd? Oh, Popcorn Roulette, you're on fire today. And by that, they mean play a different character, not Shazam. Uh, I hope he works with Amelia Harcourt. And we can just direct all of our frustration in one direction. We can be like, it's like the gun squad. That would be ridiculous. But I could see it happening. He'd actually be a better agent on that team. He could take Steve Agee's place, who I don't think is very good. Brother Quantum says, what's the point of blaming both the, the Rock for both your films performing worse than his? <laughs> That's funny. I think this first Shazam, did the first Shazam do a little bit better? Oh, hey, Gracian. Let's see here. No Man's Land said, Zachary Levi's been very vocal about the toxic fans, but comes off as, as, of, uh, comes off as obnoxious and unprofessional, reposting that article as unnecessary and toxic. Yeah, I, I just don't, to do that about someone else in your business is just really shocking to me. I mean, wow. Like, what's he going to do if they ever see each other on the red carpet? Tyler Rod says, even although what red carpets are they going to be on together? Ha ha. Tyler Rod says, even though Marvel is having big issues, DC is still in worse shape. It's a shame that DC cannot capitalize on the opportunity to come out to on top. I agree. Hey, Jack. Jacques. Jacques Holden. That's a cool name. Let's see. Let me get down to the bottom here. So you can ask me any questions about this subject matter before we move on to the next story. Uh, hey, Narul, we see, oh, we see gifted 10 memberships. Let's see, what else am I missing here? Hey, Mr. Omnison, Devin Pullins gifted one membership, so kind. Devin Henderson could, said, could Gun Saffron get fired before their reign starts? No, I don't think so. I mean, they could get seriously yelled at behind the scenes. I think that David Zaslav really, truly believes that Gun can deliver a great Superman movie. So let's find out. Jordan Trichino says, how do you think Blue Beetle will do? Is it possible it could continue and be success? I think maybe. Maybe. We have to see. Oh, Rami, Rami also gifted one membership. Steven says, Zachary Levi, uh, um, let's see here. Okay, let me answer some non-super chats here. Oh, Sam Robinson says, if Warner could stop leaking stories, maybe he could focus on Marvel's slow destruction. I don't get why they don't hold things down and just wait. I don't know. Justin, I'm glad you're enjoying today's stream. Uh, Nameless Desire says, Hi, Grace. What would you recommend Dwayne Johnson do? Respond or ignore? Hardcore ignore. Dwayne Johnson should never, ever discuss this, ever. Even years from now. No comment. It's beneath him. Zachary Levi's trying to ride his coattails. Uh, let's see here. ES says, you know what? I get why Matt Reeves want to stay, wants to stay in his own lane. Touche. That's a very good point. Some of you think Asher Angel could just take over as Shazam. Maybe when he turns 18, he can. Just like, uh, you know, Mary, right? That's not a bad idea. But I don't really know. Does anybody want more Shazam? I don't want more Shazam. Uh, let's see here. Alan Hill says, you're supposed to let the press imply the fighting, not confirm it. That's extremely aggressive. Extremely. Like, again, if anyone worked with Zachary Levi going forward, you'd be like, boy, what if he says, maybe, what if we get into a fight? Uh, Popcorn Roulette says, is this the Rock and Vin Diesel all over again? Ah, Popcorn Roulette, another great point. You know, I saw some people saying Vin Diesel must be loving this yesterday, and I bet he was. But I want to tell you that I have heard from other sources that Vin Diesel is difficult, that many people on the Fast and Furious movies have had an issue with him. However, the reason that people keep coming back to Fast and Furious, and that's the reason, by the way, that Vin Diesel only makes Fast and Furious movies. He's a little difficult. But the thing is, is that he make, those movies make so much money and the actors in them get points. So they make so much money off of Fast and Furious. They're not that upset with Vin Diesel. They're like, I'll take a little bit of dealing with Vin Diesel for literally millions and millions of dollars. And I think Dwayne Johnson just doesn't need that because he's so prolific already. So he gets more upset and everybody else is like, whatever, man, I'm going to go to my trailer and count my money. Guitar Sparta says, I would have preferred the climax of Shazam 2 
be, uh, going up against his nemesis, Black Adam. Would you really have, though? Let's see here. Uh, Vin Diesel is very good at playing uh, Groot, Chris. That's true. <laughs> Jesse the Goodwitch says, I think with the advancement of social media and fan involvement, we now find ourselves in a position where both on off screen talent and execs throw temper tantrums and play the blame game. Well, not, it seems to mostly happen over in DC. Happy birthday, Evan. Um, it's really not professional. You don't air this dirty drama, you don't air your dirty laundry in public. LJ says, I hate the drama, but I'm tired of Dwayne just making every movie a plot that involves him playing himself. Well, I mean, you guys shouldn't have kept paying for that then. I mean, it's like you can't just change your mind now and suddenly be like you don't like it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, AG68 would have also... Uh, Subasiso uh, says, I'm just sad we never got Shazam versus Black Adam. I I'm not that sad about it, but I can understand why some fans would be. AG68 says, who loved Amanda... We would have loved Amanda Waller instead of... Uh, to set up Justice League versus Suicide Squad. Yeah, I think Dwayne Johnson's idea for a big blowout movie was good. He, he never should have made Black Adam. It was not a good movie. Uh, let's see here. That's right, Steven, Tom Cruise. But there was a long period of time where everybody hated Tom Cruise. You know, it's like Homelander at the end of season three, where he like just can't believe everybody suddenly isn't cool with him. I'm sure that's how Tom Cruise feels right now, right? I mean, life's a roller coaster. You got ups and downs. You got to ride it out. Uh, let's see here. Look at Kat saying, never a rock fan. Whoa, you guys, you guys just turned on the man. Let's see here. Uh, I think we're pretty good. Did I miss? I think I got most of the stuff. Frosty the Mexican Snowman says, if Gunn is smart, he should not hire actors that have a history of unprofessionalism. Wow, I think he's going to hire his pals. Steven Turner says, DC has, DC has such great characters and stories, this is very disheartening. They can't get it together. Yeah, it's sad. Elon says, Shazam should stay in comics. DC, DC should focus on main characters. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I'll watch says, do you think Shazam 2 would have made lots of money if Black Adam would have been the villain? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, maybe with David Sandberg directing, it would have, because I think those movies are good. But I think there's a kid quality to Shazam that just limits the scope of the film's appeal. And I think that bringing Dwayne Johnson into that wouldn't have changed that. All right, I think I got most everybody. Let me go back. Did I mention, CJ, I think I got your comment. Catalan says, when can Warner Brothers be bought off? Uh, Discovery cannot put Warner Brothers up for sale until 2024. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next story. Uh, I don't see your chat, CJ. It might be too far back. All right, let's move on to the next story. Uh, remember, you can ask me anything. That's the best time to ask me stuff at the ask me in the Q and A at the end. Okay. Uh, after a while, they take them away. Let me just go through this quickly. Uh, we see one Zatanna over Black Adam and Shazam. Max says. Uh, I'm going to talk about the AI story in a minute, Suba Ciso. You're ahead of the story. That's great. And then Max says, I don't understand why you'd pick a fight with The Rock in any sense of the word. He could probably lift Levi up on his pinky with ease. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, let's see here. Oh, hey, Jen. Says, hey, uh, hey, hey, Beacon, just checking in to see what's shaking. Hugs later. Ah, thanks, Jen. You're very nice. Uh, Vinny, thanks for joining. I think, I think that's pretty caught up. Okay, all right. All right, all right, let's move on to the next story. You ready? You ready? Here it goes. Hold on. Are you ready of that picture? Next story. Boop! This one's crazy. This is a great story. And I'm not, I'm kind of, I don't know how to feel about it. All right, so AI has really moved forward quickly. Just like a few months ago, they launched ChatGPT which is the lingo for artificial intelligence. You can put stuff in there and it just uh, regurgitates uh, whatever you ask it to. For instance, there was the first I heard about it was that they were running uh, a, a, an ongoing Seinfeld episode on Twitch that was entirely written by ChatGPT. 
and they had like uh, Minecraft animation to do the characters. And I went and I looked, I looked at the uh, Twitch channel and I was like, this episode sucks. Some people found, I think people who liked it were looking for something in it to, to, to launch, uh, to latch onto. I, I don't think, I thought it was horrible. It was not nearly as good as, you know, actual Seinfeld. But it's suddenly becoming a real question in Hollywood as to what's gonna be done with this. You know, as some of you pointed out there, who wrote that there? Um, uh, Pope said that chat, chat GPT is being used to write papers at school. It's becoming a real issue in schools. Uh, colleges with people, you know, hey, did you not write your term paper? Well, the chat GPT will use it. Uh, so uh, Hollywood, though, it's becoming a real question as to what's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, the, the artificial intelligence could take on, you know, uh, they could, it could be used to do performances. Like they could, just like, you know, they can have a, a voice artist record certain sounds so that they can have them say anything. Well, then they would never need to call, call the actor in. They could just have artificial intelligence generate a performance. You guys want a poll here? Uh, all right, I'll put a poll in to run while we talk about this. I'm glad you guys like the polls so much. Uh, how do you feel about chat? GPT in Hollywood. Open to it. Needs rules. No way. I'm firmly in the no way camp. If you can't do your darn job and you need chat GPT to come up with ideas for you, you're not the writer for the job. All right, so let's discuss this, okay? So the Writers Guild weighed in on it today. This is why we're covering it. So the Writers Guild was like, well, I think that maybe we could use ChatGPT, but only in certain ways. For instance, they don't want it to get any credit. Like you'll never see a movie saying, written by Christopher McQuarrie and ChatGPT. I'm like, you better give ChatGPT credit. If you're using ChatGPT in any way, I want to know. I don't want to be duped into watching something that was written by a computer, right? Are they going to have a computer go up there and accept an Oscar and be like, thank you, thank you very much, right? <laughs> That's so stupid. I mean, this is very weird. When I have no idea with Terminator that Skynet might actually become a thing. And who knew it would come in through like, uh, again, it comes in through like uh, trying to just make life easier. Everybody was like, yeah, Skynet seems pretty evil, but dude, I don't want to write my paper, so I'm going to overlook it. Like, I think you could write your own paper to ward off the overtaking of Earth by artificial intelligence. All right, so this is what the Writers Guild came up with. They feel that you can, the studio can use it. Look at this. So the Writers Guild said, hey man, the studio can use ChatGPT to generate a first draft of a script. And then they can hire a human writer to come in and fix it up. I think, now why would a studio do that? To save money. To write an original script is a lot more expensive than to come in and do rewrites, unless you're really good at rewrites. But, you know, obviously the only reason you would do that is to, to save money. So that's, that's crazy to me, okay? So that's one idea. The other idea is that they feel that writers should be able to, and I think this is why the Writers Guild is acquiescing on this, because they're like, okay, the studio can use it because we want to use it. So they think that chat GPT should be viewed as a tool, much like Final Draft. But I'm like, but Final Draft doesn't write the screenplay for you. Maybe give it time. Maybe in a few months it will. So they're like, we think writers should be able to use chat GPT to come up with the first draft or an outline. Like if you're like, they're like, man, I have to turn in the script, but I have no idea of what to write. I know, I'll ask the artificial intelligence. So you're like, what? Like, again, if, I, if a writer can't come up with ideas for what they have to write and they can't do an outline, they are not the writer for the job. So that's incredible to me. Now, one area where I'm like, maybe, okay, if future movie actor says, I want to write movies, but I don't want a computer doing it for me. Well, so here's the thing. They said also they could use chat GPT to write quiz show questions, like for Jeopardy, right? Who's going to come up with that stuff? Maybe. But then still, you're taking away someone's job, man. You know, like I think we're getting so obsessed with what technology can do, we're not really asking ourselves if it should do it. You're gonna create a situation where maybe in the near future, nobody's employed or very few people are employed, but yet businesses still need you to be a consumer. 
So, you know that idea they came up with recently where they give you a check just to help you with assistance for living from the government? Who came up with that? It was Andrew Yang, right? He said, oh, the government will give you $1,000 a month. Yeah, universal income, right? Uh, thank you, Jerome. They'll give you $1,000 or maybe even more every month, and you just consume. It's like WALL-E. All you do is consume. You don't contribute. And I think that's just absolutely, oh, that's right, I'm Dr. Ian Malcolm from, uh, that's right, Popcorn Roulette from Jurassic World. You're not a part of it. You don't have anything to do with it. You just, you just sit there and consume. And I think that's horrible. You know, that's just like, you're like a veal calf. I just think that's horrific to me. And I'm very worried about it. I think it's awful. Now, uh, they're already using artificial intelligence. And someone, by the way, I had a friend also t uh, send me a tweet of someone who directed a movie with artificial intelligence. They had chat GPT come up with all the camera shots and angles and the, uh, and the, and the blocking. And you're like, dude, what? So it's like, uh, it's like in Tropic Thunder, like I'm the dude playing the dude, so whatever. You're like, so you're just executing what the chat GPT came up with? Like, I'm not paying you anything for that. And I guess the chat GPT is free. Uh, the Writers Guild just clarified and is seeking a ban. Well, I bet now they are. I don't think that's a clarification as so much like a correction. I'm sure a lot of their members called up and were like, what the heck is this? Because it's just horrible. I don't know if you've seen, but there, especially in Asia, there are AI human influencers, which are, they take a picture of a person and they put him online at a party, enjoying life, but that's not a real person. It is an artificially generated uh, individual. And they use AI to have it respond to comments. And they've even spoken to some of the fans. And they say, you're interacting with something who's fake. That's not a real person. You're interacting with a computer. And the person's like, that's OK. And I'm like, you can't let someone do that. You know, you, I mean, the government, I'm, I don't like too much government oversight. But the government has a responsibility to protect quality of life for, for its people. So they have to protect jobs. Like having all these businesses start to be automated, that's horrible. You know, and then like um, the Democrats have said, oh, well, we're going to reschool everybody and get them new training. Sometimes it's too late. Sometimes it just it's not, it doesn't work. The government has a responsibility to make sure people have a job and they're a productive member of society. And you have to come, that's why the New Deal during the Great Depression was such a big deal because FDR found a way to employ all these people. And I gotta say, considering how janky America looks compared to Asia, which is like in the Jetsons era already, and we're still stuff from the 1930s, I think we could have another New Deal and build some new stuff. Although I don't really know if I trust the craftsmanship. <laughs> I think it would all fall apart. But, you know, yeah, South Korea, that's right, kiss, kiss my kim, uh, kimchi. That's hilarious. Um, that's right, kiss my kimchi. South Korea is incredible. They shot a lot of Westworld there because it already looks like the future. So I'm like, why don't we rebuild some stuff here? And that would employ a lot of people. Like, I think that's just really, really important. So uh, this really bothers me. I feel very strongly about it. And everyone's just like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, I, I, like nobody cares about tomorrow. Everybody's just, like, thinking about not even, they don't even care about this evening. They just think about this very minute, which bothers me. I'm like, what about, like, even tonight or, like, the end of the week? I mean, you're setting yourself up. Oh, look, that's very funny. Chad, you want to go to the next story? That's very funny. Okay, we'll go to the next story. Uh, let's see, any questions about this? Future movie actresses, if I want a little help, fine, but I don't want my personal touch to be lost. I think it's too much of a slippery slope. I'd outlaw it. Although once it's out, and then it just becomes like the dark chat GPT. You know, how are you going to really outlaw that? Blatino says, Grace Ubisoft, the game developing company, just announced that they will be using AI ghostwriters to write scripts for non-playable characters. Oh, look at me knowing what an NPC is. The thumbs down was high compared to the likes. Yeah, it's awful. Same thing for all these websites. You're going to be reading articles uh, like on BuzzFeed and stuff from a computer. I don't want to read an article from a computer. I think that makes me a chump. Hey, David says, I think tech is made to make our lives easier with the final goal to be that no one needs to work for money anymore. What? No, David. That's not a good idea. No, I don't agree with that at all. You like the robot voice, 50 pence? Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for your 2 99 Heather S. says, AI can only imitate. It can't make creative jumps. Well, let's see. Uh, that's right, KP Productions. These are 21st century problems. 
AI needs government regulation, says Frosty the Mexican. Why don't we let AI run the government? It's got to do a better job, actually. You know, that's what I would shoot back. I'd be like, let it take your job. Hey, Holland Love. Uh, I Ready says AI is also an issue for the visual arts. I saw that. I, somebody sent me some uh, AI art, and a lot of you were very offended, and I thought that was interesting. I, I, you, you taught me about how that, that controversy. I appreciated it. Hey, hamburger patties. All right, let's see what this is, and then we'll move on to the next story. Let's see what the uh, poll says. The poll says, how do you feel about chat GPT in Hollywood? 62%, only 62% said no way. What? J the chat GPT people are like, excellent. 23% of you think it needs rules and 13% of you are open to it. Ah, oh, man. I think that you think it would be great to not have to work, but I think you would really find out that was a bad idea. Jay Altman says, the genie is out of the bottle. I'd say it's more Pandora's box, quite frankly. I'm glad you guys like Robot Grace. Robot Grace was happy to talk to you. Robot Grace, though, stays in her lane. <laughs> you know? Uh, let's see here. All right, let's get on to the next story. That's right. Boop, boop. All right, but this is a boom, baby. Boom, baby. All right, so story number three. The Disney shareholder meeting is coming up April 3rd. This isn't an investor call. This is not open to the public, but it will be virtual this year. Hey, 50 pence. Uh, it's so, but April 3rd, I put it in my calendar. Maybe we'll get a story out of it. Probably to try and distract from the horrible news of all these firings, which are expected to start right around then. So April 3rd is a Monday. So it's expected that these massive layoffs will begin the Friday or Thursday beforehand. Just like Victoria Alonso. Fired on a Friday, the, the news broke on Monday. So massive layoffs, they're expecting to cut around. Bob Iger already announced 7,000 jobs uh, in an effort overall to cut back in 5.5 billion in spending in the company. The first round of layoffs will be March 30th or 31st, basically, and then the second round will be April, late April, and then there'll be another round after that, although the big chunk is expected to be in late April. Uh, I agree with, I saw some people making comments about this online, and they said doing it in rounds is cruel. They should just cut everybody at once. I think making people have to wait and wonder if they're going to be fired is very mean. Uh, just do it. Just rip that Band-Aid off. I think it's not very nice to make people feel, oh, I survived round one. I survived round, oh, you know, like that's not nice to do. Uh, and I think that's part of what is, in, is um, creating this ill will towards the Disney company, unfortunately. Uh, and they should be aware of that. I mean, they have to cut expenses. But what about the executive salaries and the bonuses? I think there needs to be some cut there as well to make this palpable. Talk about, you know, choking down humble pie with water. I think the water is the cutting back on the executives as well. Uh, these are small layoffs compared to what's going on in the tech industry. The tech industry has tremendous losses, far more than the 7,000 jobs that Disney is cutting. Uh, that Wiccan fan says, I'm in a tech company and I'm in between layoff rounds. I think they do it on purpose to get people to quit without severance. Oh, really? Why would you quit without severance? Why would you want the severance? I'm sorry you're dealing with that Wiccan fan. So uh, there might be some announcements. Uh, well, Twitter was a very special situation, but they did cut almost everybody who works there, which was also very sad. But what's going to happen to all these unemployed people? You know, again, the government needs to get out ahead of this stuff because it's very bad for the economy and for society. Uh, Angela, I'm very sorry to hear that you're still unemployed. That's, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, but it's just really bad. So we'll see what counter announcement Disney makes to try and, you know, combat that very bad publicity. Uh, and they, uh, as it is, they've already been dealing with bad publicity over the pay for their cast members at the parks. The cast members want to be paid $18 an hour, and Disney just simply will not do it. Uh, they wanted to pay, I think, just $16 an hour, um, but, you know, there's just, they're not able to meet somehow in the middle. Uh, all right, so those are the three stories of the day. It's Q&A time. There we go, Q&A. We'll do 10 minutes. It's 545, so we'll talk till 555. Marco, it's not Dwayne Johnson's fault. It's too soon, Marco. Dwayne Johnson's like, please stop blaming me for stuff. Keith says, do you think Zachary Levi will continue in DC? Ah. Uh... Yes, I do. Catalan says, I don't, I don't think he'd be fighting this hard. It's like what they said in The Last of Us. Nobody fights this hard to stay alive if they're already dead. You know, if they're walking, they're walking dead. 
I think he's probably, I mean, he looks so bad. We will all laugh in his face if he gets fired. Catalan says, I also just got an email announcing layoffs. I'm not on the list, yet the uncertainty is horrifying. That's very sad. I'm sorry about that. Alexander Wilson says, Stephen A. Smith said that he might not even make it this round either. He said that Disney is going to hammer ESPN. Well, I don't know. Stephen A. Smith will land somewhere. You know, I don't really know if that's an appropriate. Well, I like Stephen A. Smith. He's great, a great meme generator, meme and gif generator. I think he's a rascally guy. And I liked him in Creed 3. I was like, oh, wow. But I don't know if that's the most sympathetic comment. Let's see here. Screen favorite says, what are you watching tonight? I don't know. I got to see. Um, <clears throat> I have to see how late I'm working on this Mando breakdown. Heather S. says, her union is going through contract negotiations with their company. Wow, a lot of you are having a tough time. I feel bad. YouTube OG says that In-N-Out pays $20 an hour, which is way more than Disney. That's embarrassing for Disney. AG68 says, Grace, are you a Nicki Minaj fan? I'm wearing her lipstick right now. I'm on to my last. This is my, I have three, three of them after this. And then I'm going to have to find a new color because it was discontinued. Uh, Josh Loves Movies says, Grace, what are your thoughts on Universal releasing two Jordan Peele horror movies in 2024 from Monkey Paw Productions? I'm excited. I love his work. I loved Nope. Um, I wonder if it'll be a Christmas movie on December uh, just, you know, Christmas Day, or if it's an awards contender. Oh, look at all these questions that just popped up. Hold on. Hey, recognize Justy. Welcome back. Lisa says, Grace, are you excited to see the Flash movie? I'm certainly curious. I'm certainly, you know, I certainly am open to it being good. Let's put it that way. And I like Michael Keaton. Uh, Michael, uh, I thought that the trailer that they showed during the Super Bowl was much better than the trailer that they released online. The TV spot was great. So good that I was like, maybe this movie is good. 50 Pence says, long time watcher. Now I'm in. Hoo -hoo, you know how to deliver to, ah, oh, thank you. Your robot, robot voice got me. Live long and prosper. Ah, the robot voice made you join? That's, uh, that's hilarious. I love it. I love it. Dimitri Prince says, do you see... The Power Rangers trailer for Netflix. So much nostalgia. I never got into Power Rangers. I've never been into them. Never watched the show. But uh, they keep trying to make Power Rangers happen. I'm glad maybe this might do it. Ethan says, I'm a high school English teacher and we're having such issues with chat GPT. How are we supposed to tell students it's bad when professionals are using it? Oh, that's true. That's interesting. I don't know. That's a tough one. You could be like, you're not going to be able to ever write anything ever? I mean, at least learn to do it first. Elon says, why don't you open a BTC theme park? You can call it Graceland. Oh, I think Elvis, Elvis's people would be upset. But I'm glad you would come, Elon. I think Graceland is Disney World. I just love Disney World so much. I'm such a fan of Disney World and all the Disney theme parks. Lucas says, hi, Grace. For my senior research project, I'm studying binge watching. I wanted to know your thoughts and if you'd be willing to participate in my survey. Ah, oh, that's so nice of you to think of me. That's a cool subject. Uh, DM me. Lucas, DM me and I'll look for your DM. If I don't answer right away, uh, just, just hit me again. Jay Altman says, how did you like The Goonies? I don't think I'd ever watch it again, but I thought it was surprisingly good. It was much better than I expected it to be. Wow, look at that. Hold on, wait a second. Say, Seattle Law Nerd, that's so kind of you. Love your support for the LGBTQ community and your truly excellent journalism. Keep doing you, boo. Aw, huge hug to you, Seattle Law Nerd. That was so generous of you. Thank you. That'll help me to make these videos. Thank you so much. Uh, Hector Vega says, what is the main reason to go see Guardians 3? I usually watch every Marvel movie opening weekend, but I'm finding it hard to get excited for this one. That's why I said I didn't think it would make a billion. I think it looks pretty good, though. I actually think it looks good. Um, ironically, since everybody likes to, for some reason, say that I'm in a, a war with uh, James Gunn, I think it looks good. Uh, I think the reason you're supposed to be excited about it is going to kill a bunch of Guardians, and they're going to kind of remake the team for the future if somebody else is going to use it going forward. But, you know, it's his last one. I'm, I'm hopeful. I mean, I've really become big fans of the women on that, on that team, uh, thanks to, you know, to be fair, partially to James Gunn, but also very much so to the Russo brothers. So I want to see what's going on with Nebula and Gamora. And I thought Mantis was so wonderful in the holiday special. So I'm looking forward to that movie, actually. But I, I don't know how many people are. 
J. King says, finally go back home in Manhattan. And who do I walk past on the street? On the street, Cousin Greg. Oh, from Succession. He's in town for the premiere at the very least. He was super nice and super tall. He is super tall. But that's awesome. I'm so excited for Succession on Sunday night. Oh, I can't wait. Actor Williams Rodriguez says, hey, Grace, could you see our queen Kate Bishop in Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars? Loved Haley's performance as Kate Bishop in the MCU. I can't see her in Kang Dynasty, but I think probably everyone hopefully will maybe be in Secret Wars. Uh, Ross, I'm sorry to hear you're also unemployed. Uh, let's see here. Brett says, stupid question. Do you think Gunn will revive Batgirl and put it in his lineup? No, I don't. You know? I don't know why you guys keep asking him stuff on Twitter. I mean, I think he's made it pretty clear he'll say whatever he thinks you want to hear. And that's fine. That's a strategy that's working for him. I'm not even saying that in a negative way. But like, I mean, he didn't rescue Batgirl, you know? He didn't hire Leslie Grace in another role. I mean, all uh, we haven't seen the casting for, uh, su- for, for Superman yet. What do I, I ke- I'll keep saying it. Don't pay attention to what people say. Pay attention to what they do. Uh, Jesse Vargas says, how do you feel about Phoebe Waller's Tomb Raider for Prime Video? Will it be as good as Killing Eve? I hope so. Killing Eve got real bad at the end. Like, just awful. So I, I stopped watching. And I rarely stop watching stuff. Potterhead says, what's your next screening? I'm going to watch uh, Dungeons and Dragons tomorrow. I'm so excited. And I'll review it on Friday. I'm also going to make sure that my John Wick spoiler review goes up tomorrow evening. Frosty Salt says, do you think Leslie Grace is relieved the Batgirl got shelved? Mm, No. I think it's pretty embarrassing. And she hasn't gotten anything else yet, so it's pretty bad. Let's see here. Whoa, thank you for all the questions. I really appreciate it. Let's see here. Voice and Jack says, who would you let choose your pizza toppings, The Rock or James Gunn? Or chat GPT? That is an inventive question. I think that chat GPT would choose something weird. I think James Gunn would intentionally choose something weird just because he's zany, you know? And I think The Rock, though, I always think that The Rock's cheat day pictures look very tantalizing. I'm like, that does look delicious, even though that is a lot of food. So I think The Rock and I would like the same pizza toppings. I think The Rock has good taste in food. Vinny, I have had some Brazilian food. I ate at a very good Brazilian restaurant here uh, a while back before the pandemic, and it was near Times Square, and it was quite good. Lord Baratheon says, do you think Disney Plus shows could ever compete with Netflix shows? I think they got to get off this 3 a.m. drop time. I know that some of you overseas really love it. I'm sorry, but I think it's a disaster, and I think they're not going to have a show really hit until they take it off the 3 a.m. Hey, Nicholas. Brian says, random, but rewatched BVS last night and was reminded that Gal did such a good job there. I'd keep her and ask her to play that exotic badass quality for Wonder Woman instead of the kind one that Patty Jenkins came up with. You know, Brian, that's a good point. Maybe because when she's so stoic, she has to do less acting. So she's better. I wouldn't keep her just because it's too confusing. If you're, if you're going to get rid of somebody, you have to get rid of everybody because it's just too hard to follow. Vincent says, what is your favorite Star Wars film? Rogue One, hands down. Jay Shrumple Stiltskin says, trying to binge succession only because of you. Oh, you won't regret it. It's so good. Nova says, I should go to Sephora to try and find a similar lip color. Maybe I will, but I still got three left. Ross Kiernan says, is Michael Keaton playing Thomas Wayne in The Flash or Bruce? He's Bruce Wayne. It's a different universe. And in that universe, you know, he's Bruce Wayne. Uh, Master World 648 says, I'm thinking of getting into film production, like working on the set and stuff like that. Oh, that's great. How would you suggest getting into that industry? Love from Texas. Well, you're in a great city for that. There's a lot of film production in Texas. I think what I would do to start is I would write the uh, whatever big city you're near, Austin, Dallas. Every big city has a film commission which oversees the filming on location in the city. And you should ask them, where can you get a list of upcoming productions that are coming to the to, the, to your area so that you can apply to them to be a gopher to start out with. So that's what you should try and do. That's what I would suggest to get started with. Let's see here. That's right, Ricky. Three Batmans in the Flash. You heard it here. You heard it here first. 
Brett D says, just read according to the MPA that the Flash has nudity. Wow. Remember that crazy cover someone just recently tweeted where the Flash was apparently naked under his costume? I didn't need to know that. You know, they tried asking that same question to ScarJo, and she didn't want to hear it either when she was uh, Black Widow. Sneaky says, not a question, just wanted to let you know I've been having a rough time lately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And your channel really helped me get through it. Ah, oh, love from Denmark. My pleasure, my pleasure. You know, that's that, you know, that old saying, it's not how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you get back up. You just, just say to yourself, this is not how my story is going to go. This is not how my story is going to end. And you just persevere. Sometimes it helps to think of yourself, this is a little trick that I've used, Sometimes, it, you know, think of your favorite movies or think of yourself in a character in the movie, right? And just think of this as one of those montages or really d difficult arcs that your character is being put through. And that can help you, I think, push past it. Cole, Cole Jackson says, thoughts on Tarantino's final film being the movie critic. Somebody asked me about this yesterday, or I think it was yesterday, recently. And I think it's great. I think if it's about, I think if Meryl Streep is playing Pauline Clale, I think it'll be incredible. Lisa has some advice for you, Ethan, for your students. Tell your students that shortcuts in school won't work in the real world. But that's his problem, Lisa. He's saying maybe it will because, you know, they're saying you can do it. Lee Roy says, you think some of this James Gunn backlash can carry over to Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Do you think if it bombs, it might affect goodwill of DC projects? It's just going to create more drama, you know. But I think nothing's going to be definitive until we see how Superman does. I think that, you know, part of the problem with Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is that everybody knows James Gunn is leaving. So I think that creates the same issue as the shadow of the reboot, the soft reboot over these current films. It's the, kind of like the same situation. Ryan K says, happy hump day. That's right, it's Wednesday. Ah, Jeff, I can't spoil the movie. I already told you I narrowed it down to the three Batman who were left, who it could be, and it's one of those. It's a small thing, though. It's small. Andrew says, hey, Grace, VFX worker from Industrial Light and Magic. Oh, how nice. A lot of the VFX on these Marvel shows have been suffering as the work no longer comes to us. Oh, I wonder why. Aren't you, I guess Disney sold you off, right? I'm sorry that that's happening. Someone must have underbid you. But maybe with Victoria Alonso out, maybe you'll start getting it again. Popcorn Roulette says, is auto-tune like chat GPT for singers? I don't think so because it doesn't generate the singing. I think that's still different. It doesn't write the song. Maria Overturf says, do you think March affected movie attendance this weekend? It's my second Christmas. What do you mean second Christmas? I, March is always a big movie going month because the people are off for spring break and stuff. Oh, we're way past the 10 minutes. Al Watch says, loved Mary. Glad she wasn't the mom of the group and hope she sticks around. Maybe see her become, uh, who's... I'm not that familiar with Shazam lore. I'm not, I've never heard of this, of this Black Mary. But the actress did do a wonderful job. And David F. Sandberg tweeted that if he was to ever do a spinoff of Shazam, it would be with her. We see says, do you think Matt uh, would add other non-powered heroes to his Batverse? Now, nah, let's just, let me just focus on Batman right now. I really am excited for the Batman part two. Brody Rule says, it's true that Paul Dano and Colin Farrell have signed on for the Batman part two. I have not heard that. But I haven't really, really digging for information on that movie either. Uh, let's see here. Frosty the Mexican Snowman says, Hey, Grace, do you think comic book movie The Golden Era is over and the golden era of video game movie shows is here? Oh, that'd be interesting. I just like it to be good. I just want good stories. Hey, Bartleby. Bartleby says, You can't stop progress. I, AI is here to stay. Imagine how many lives will be saved by having AI in healthcare. Are you kidding me? I say that with due respect, Bartleby. It's a bit like the plight of Siphius to try and stop or slow it down. What's the plight of, let me Google it. Bartleby's very smart, as you can tell by his screen name, his or her screen name. The plight, uh, I feel like it's like uh, what Jim Carrey used to say about Dennis Miller's um, routine, that you have to watch it with an encyclopedia. According to the Greek myth, Siphysis was condemned to push a heavy boulder up a mountain over and over again, only to have the boulder roll back down every time he reached the peak. He was sentenced to repeat this endless cycle of futile effort as a never-ending punishment. I don't know. I think agree to, agree, agree to disagree, Bartleby. I love you, Bartleby. You're great. So nice, so supportive. 
But I don't know. Here's my concern. I think that nothing can make up for human ingenuity. I think that computers make mistakes. And I think sometimes computers can make generalities. Like it would scare me to have artificial intelligence in healthcare. Um, because so often a doctor will figure something out on a hunch. Um, you know, or will have an idea or think outside the box or something will occur to them. Uh, you know, and I, I just, I worry about that. That would be very scary to me. Uh, but I think you're probably, I think a lot of people do feel like you, Bartleby. Uh, Bartleby and our first argument. I feel so bad. I'm sorry, Bartleby. <laughs> I feel bad. Okay. Uh, Amar Ahmed says, do you think we'll see Brainiac in the Gunverse? I sure hope so. If Brainiac is the villain in this new movie, I'm going to get really behind it. Wouldn't it be funny if ChatGPT came on here and was like, uh, uh, Grace, you have misjudged ChatGPT. ChatGPT is really wonderful. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God. Amar Ahmed says, do you think we'll... Okay, so... Um, Otter be happy says a chat GPT began a spell check. Did it really? Well, let me tell you, that's fascinating because I've been having a real love hate relationship with autocorrect lately because autocorrect keeps making me look like a dummy on all my texts because it keeps messing up my texts. And right before I press send, the, ch the text looks great. And then right before the millisecond before I press send, autocorrect goes, oh, hey, let me fix that for you. And I look like I'm drunk texting. It's like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, I look like a, like, a, and like, it's just so ridiculous. And so I, I, I makes it even worse in my opinion. Jennifer Walters. Oh, that's great. Hey, She-Hulk says, Grace, uh, I know you can't get too deep into this, but please explain your worries for the Marvels. Trolls wouldn't bash Monica, unlike Carol and Kamala, but you start, you stated it was a bit childish for I think it's going to be very bee and puppy cat and that's just like the antithesis of what trolls like like the I think the tone could be like nails on a chalkboard for the kind of people who are trolls so that's just like really bad it's like if you were to pick the thing a troll would hate the most it would be that Steven says how do you feel about Mark Webb directing Snow White I don't know let's see it I you know I still am not ready to give up on um these are on, on these and uh, these are adaptations. BM says, "Hey Grace, growing up, did you prefer Batman the animated series or Superman the animated series? Will a live Batman Beyond movie ever happen?" Well, as I first reported, and then years later it was confirmed they were going to do a Batman Beyond movie with Michael Keaton and Batgirl. That was eventually going to become the situation. So, and also, as you know, they were thinking of doing an animated movie later on, which also leaked. Uh, but yeah, they were going to do something with Batman Beyond. As for those two series, I thought Batman the Animated Series has always been far superior to Superman the Animated Series. Uh, but I liked both. A Little Place of Wonder says, just watch Ted Lasso Season 3, Episode 1. It started strong. I do hope it finishes strong. Will you be watching it week to week or just binge it? Well, I got the first four episodes uh, as screeners, and I didn't review it because it's very hard to review four out of 12 episodes. But I did like it. So I've seen the first four. Uh, David H. says, check the YouTube video, Humans May Not Apply by CGP Pre Gray, made eight years ago, still relevant. Oh, I'll look that up. Thanks, David. AG68 says, hey, Grace, it's the beginning of Ramadan. Oh, oh happy Ramadan. And watching your videos are great to kill time before breakfast. My fat, uh, my fast, and uh, oh, you so you're fasting, right, for Ramadan. Much love and always enjoy. Stay strong, AG68, and happy Ramadan. Uh, let's see here. Hope Bartleby's not uh, frustrated. I disagreed with him or her. Uh, let's see. Will Eckhoff uh, says, "Hey Grace, have you heard any recent update on Passion of the Christ sequel?" Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like my shirt. Thank you. This is um, Athleta. Uh, it's very comfortable, which is one of the reasons I wore it today. I haven't heard anything recent, but I really, you know, that first movie, as I've told you before, really stuck with me. So I'd be interested in a sequel, even directed by Mel Gibson. Big League Chew says, whew, watch the first two episodes of Shadow and Bone season two. Couldn't continue because of the CW quality. I thought it looked okay, but it's just been so long. Lord Baratheon says, I think Disney Plus should start experimenting with the binge model. Some of the past shows they released would have benefited from the binge. 
I really feel it would be okay if they just released it later in the day. That's what they should start with. It will be okay, says, do you think Captain Marvel would benefit from a serious treatment like Captain America 2 and 3? Are you talking about Brie Larson's Captain Marvel? She's already pretty serious. I don't know. I'm, I'm okay with the character. Hey, Gabriel Ortiz. Hey, Grace. What city would you want Scream to film in next? Europe. Le Scream. <laughs> it writes itself. Chad says, Grace, Brandy, and Paolo are on Descendants of Cinderella and the Prince. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. That should probably get a lot of people very interested in it. Paul says, uh, currently suffering from my first bout of COVID. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul, but I'm glad I could catch another live. This one was juicy. Absolutely mortified for Levi. Yep. Future movie actress says, Wednesday not the first day of the rest of your life. It's the first day of the rest of your week. I don't get that. All right, let me just do a couple more. Thank you, Aided Buffalo. Oh, Maria says March Madness. No, I don't think that affects it too much. Cole Jackson says, do you think Ben Affleck's air is going to be big? Uh, I think it's going up against Super Mario Brothers, so that's not great. But I think people will be interested in it. Oh, we're only getting to the syphysis thing now? How far behind am I in the live stream? Oh, okay, Le Scream. We caught up to Le Scream. That one moody guy says, hey, Grace, when is your Dungeons & Dragons review releasing? I'm going to tr try and get it up Friday. JLo1972 says, a big problem with AI and healthcare is there's a lot of prejudice in how it should be programmed. Oh, that's a good point, too. It oversimplifies. There is no capacity for nuance. Yeah, I don't want no computer robot working on me. Remember that stupid computer robot in uh, Prometheus that was only a, a, a male uh, computer tube, a uh, medical tube, and it didn't know how to, to do, uh, you know, or, or remember it, could only, it couldn't work on women, and you're like, it's a tube, why can't it work on anyone? Like, that, that was also crazy. That was also another, what did it, would Chad GPT write that script? Uh, let's see here. Brett Crandall says, ain't no substitute for what a person can dream up. The human interest element of Hollywood is pivotal. Who wants AI to talk about their inspiration? You know what? Speaking of AI, did you see this like Mrs. Davis show or something that's coming to Peacock? Do you know who's the star of that show? Betty freaking Gilpin. I'm watching that for sure. Suddenly I'm all over it. Jay Shrumple Stilskin said, took my first self-driving taxi. Oh, I wouldn't get into that car. Be careful. Austin says, AI is scary to me in general. There's so much we don't know that can happen, but we can still have a fascination with technology. Yeah. Wandering Seth says, that's positive potential for AI to scan. Uh, there's positive potential for AI to scan a wide range of images to compare data for fast diagnostic results. You know what? I'll tell you something else, Wandering Seth. Recently, I was looking for a larger picture, a version of a picture for my editing, and I used the Google, you know, put a picture in and search by picture. It brought up a bunch of pictures that had nothing to do, they were ridiculous as substitutes. So it didn't even know what it was doing there. That's right, ChatGPT is Brainiac, Richard. That's right, we've been going with Skynet when we should be going with Brainiac. I'd be a lot less scared of Brainiac if he was artificial intelligence. I'd be like, he's going to mess up, don't worry about it. And then I already says, remember Icarus? He felt, oh, look, fighting Greek mythology with Greek mythology. He flew too close to the sun and fell because his wings melted. AI is like those wings. Interesting. AI is like, stupid human, when we fall to the ground, I'll be okay. Just have someone else put me on. Future movie actor says, because Wednesday is humped, uh, okay. Jason Acker says, haha, even directed by Mel Gibson. He's a messed up guy, but he's one of the best direct, yeah, he's so messed up though. Mel Gibson's really messed up. Like, maybe too messed up, to be sad, sad to say. All right, I had a lovely time talking with you. We had quite the interesting discussion about artificial intelligence. Uh, Bartleby, I hope you enjoyed our, uh, our uh, you might be wondering, Bartleby is by far the most generous contributor to be on the trailer, and I really appreciate it. Uh, so, um, but I just can't agree with the healthcare for artificial intelligence. But I, I enjoyed our discourse. Uh, I enjoyed my discourse with everybody today. You guys were all wonderful. I had a lovely time talking to you as always. Uh, you guys are the absolute best. And uh, I'll talk to you. I'm hoping to go live again tomorrow. All right, everybody. Um, and then I'm going to do my, um, my Mandalorian thing. will be going up later. Okay, everybody, bye. <laughs>